Welcome back. Uh, now we're going to talk with JJ about some of the Thunderbolt connectivity uh, options and technologies and performance and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. uh, that will be available on upcoming Z77 motherboards or currently variable Z77 motherboards essentially. Yeah. First thing I want to ask is, so the board that we're looking at right here now is the P8 Z77 Premium. Premium. That's correct. All right, and this is the effectively our highest end board uh, that we're going to be releasing for the Z77 uh, chipset. Um, there is a potential let's say, in the works ROG concept. Okay. Um, but uh, at this time, things aren't finalized on that front. But at least relative to our current product stack, mm -hmm. this essentially is going to be the board that has everything on it. Um, and including that is going to be Thunderbolt. So this has actually a native Thunderbolt header built onto the back plane in terms of the I.O. So the other brother boards we've seen have had a Thunderbolt header. Correct. Which uh, will require uh, an add-in card. Mm -hmm. And then a, a cable will be run from the card to the header. Correct. In order to, to, to support all the features. This one has the, the, the controller on it natively, connector Correct. on the back of the board. Mm -hmm. um, will there be any kind of performance differences between this and the other solution, or no. will they be effectively the same? Yeah, in terms of uh, the performance testing that we've done, overall it's going to be dependent on the host device and the controller that's initiating the Thunderbolt on the uh, external end that's going to be the okay. limiting factor or the factor to increase performance. But relative right. to our design implementations, uh, the controller card add-in, uh, on the by 4 slot mm -hmm. or the integrated Thunderbolt header are going to both essentially perform the same. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about the the test that we got here and the performance that yeah. we're gonna that we're gonna look at. Yeah, no problem. So here, uh, what we've gone ahead and uh, decided to use for testing purposes is uh, a, a Seagate GoFlex Thunderbolt uh, enclosure. So I think this is a, a nice way to show because it's fairly reasonable in terms of the cost. I think most of the current Thunderbolt um, solutions on the market are very expensive. They're focused yes. at content professionals. So you're talking about you know um, over generally five hundred five hundred dollars, even up mm. to upwards of a thousand dollars. This is a little bit more enthusiastic. And it's about 100 bucks. You do have to still spend the expense of the cable of about $50. Right. Um, but you do expect to finally see some actually competitors' uh, cables coming to the market sometime in about uh, mid Q2 to Q3. Um, so that pricing, I would expect that that would go ahead and drop accordingly. Um, so from there, we've got a SATA 6G SSD to help us show the maximum throughput potential of the platform. So um, we've got that connected here. And we also have, um, from our previously used USB 3 uh, demonstrations, got the thermal take uh, enclosure, which supports UASP because I think there's going to be some interesting um, performance considerations to take into as to why we would want to maybe use Thunderbolt in comparison to using USB or error even other external connections. Okay. Okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and connect it and uh, go from there. It's pretty straightforward, very similar to any other type of device in terms of being plug and play, right? So no big differences in that regard. So we'll go ahead and plug in. Uh, if I can go ahead and the device. Get in here. And just like USB devices you get it right the third time. Okay. Okay, so we've gone ahead. So it pops up the same it, way. Okay. Pl plugged in there. Now that drive was only coming up as USB boost because we were previously using as USB right. uh, boost drive, but it will work, of course, entirely without issues there. So um, we're just going to go ahead and uh, confirm that we see our drive here. No problems. And uh, yep. okay, we're good. So no issues there. Okay, so um, from here, we've gone ahead and actually already run some Thunderbolt performance metrics. Okay. Okay, so if we go ahead and, and open it up here and we take a look at our peak performance, uh, we can see that it's actually quite impressive. Uh, when we take a look at uh, the fact that we're over essentially 340 mm -hmm. megabytes, um, about uh, 300 and uh, essentially 50 megabytes on the write performance and a bit over that on the read performance, mm -hmm. this is quite good in comparison to the baseline bot operational performance. Um, so while ASUS had definitely has some unique technologies to help extend USB 3 performance to actually even potentially greater than Thunderbolt performance, if we're just talking about gotcha. in an industry perspective, right, when we're just talking about controllers versus controllers, Thunderbolt is effectively faster than the bot operating mode for USB 3. Okay. So we have a clear benefit for that. So anybody that's looking for just default high performance storage, Thunderbolt has a key advantage in this regard. Now, the other advantage that we're going to take a look at, and uh, we can show this a little bit Ooh, more. Yeah, I can see that already in the 4Ks. It, exactly, and that's really where you're seeing the, the nice performance bump, especially when we compare that to, let's say, um, the bot mode. So if we go ahead and take a look at uh, Intel in terms of bot mode operation. USB 3, we're looking at USB 3.0 performance C Exactly, here. so we're just looking at the bot mode, not, not, our tur not, not our turbo mode, just basic bot, right? So trying to keep it apples to apples you can see that we have uh, quite a bit of a difference here uh, in terms of that the uh, Q-depth performance is significantly better on Thunderbolt. So very similar in terms of the same type of performance that we see under UASP 
uh, mm. performance for USB 3. Right. Right. So this also shows that Thunderbolt is inherently a solution that has been designed for multimedia practices because you need to have that type of QDEP performance in an active workflow. So if you were doing, you know, active layering uh, in Photoshop or if you're working with like Blender and you have multiple layers in a workflow or, or any type of uh, movie editing or anything like that, mm -hmm. that's all going to be, be very beneficial in that type of environment. Um, we can see that there's a little bit of sensitivity in terms of the right performance. Now keep in mind that this is going to change slightly depending on the controller that's used. So different controller companies will have changes to the optimization protocol. So this can actually be a little bit higher, but we can see respective to here, um, overall, you know, Thunderbolt is going to be a faster implementation uh, than USB. But definitely if we were to compare it in terms of our implementation and what we have on our boards, um, it, it's really going to be, once again, you looking at what makes the most sense for your usage model, right? Because if we take a look at, once again, our turbo mode performance uh, for the Intel controller, we can offer much better sequential performance. So this is turbo mode on Intel. Intel's we're USB We're seeing 426 3. read right. versus 371 read on uh, Thunderbolt. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. So we can see that we can offer very, very good performance here. So I think it's going to come down to really uh, your usage, but uh, definitely our, our commitment is to make sure that we give you the best uh, options, whether it's USB 3 or Thunderbolt, but we're set and ready to go. Performance, I think, is outstanding. And keep in mind that the real big benefit that you're going to have is the effective ready bandwidth within Thunderbolt um, can scale, of course, to be considerably higher. Like in our own internal testing, we've easily actually exceeded one gigabit, uh, excuse me, one gigabyte worth of data. So we can very much be faster than USB 3, but those are going to require more complex um, uh, controllers and also more complex enclosures that are going to cost more. But if you take a look at some of those, uh, you know, like rated uh, Thunderbolt enclosures, then you could very easily exceed even the best performance that USB 3 offers. Uh, plus, you don't have the flexibility of, of course, uh, daisy chaining out to like support monitors and other things like that. Right. Okay, so that gives us a perspective on. So it's all it's all going to depend on how the Thunderbolt uh, kind of ecosystem grows yeah. around uh, the technologies as more solutions. I think it's really going to take more solutions other than other than Apple based products uh, to have motherboards to kind of integrate that technology on there to really see consumers want to go out and buy at lower prices. Yeah, definitely see new types of things. So. I mean, and that and we're 100 percent behind that, which is part of the reason why we've spent so much effort to incorporate it on so many of our boards, so that you know us being that largest board vendor, we help to kind of put our foot out there and say we're committed to having uh, support for this high-speed interconnect. Cool. We look forward to testing it. Mm -hmm. Be sure to check out PCPer.com for more reviews and information on everything PC hardware.